Hi everybody, I'm Rachel from Rachel Cooks with Love. Today I'm going to be making some delicious gorditas de azúcar, just like the ones my grandma used to make many years ago. Now for any of you out there who don't know what gorditas de azúcar are, they're like little tortillas. They're small and they're sweet and they're delicious. And so that's what I'm going to do for you today. So let's get started. So in a big bowl like this, I'm going to put in two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to put one teaspoon of baking powder, a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, one cup of sugar, I'm going to bring them in together. You want to stir this in together really, really well because you do have baking powder in here and salt and all that. So you want to make sure that it's mixed in really, really good like this. But you know, when I was a little girl, I remember going to my grandma's house. That's my mom's mom, my grandma Esther's house. And she always had gorditas de azúcar made and she used to eat them and drink her coffee. I think maybe she had milk. I don't remember because I was really young. But I do remember that she always had them, and they were so good. So once you stir it in really, really well like that, I'm going to go ahead and add my shortening. I've got a third of a cup of vegetable shortening right here. And just as a tip, you know, I rubbed a little bit of vegetable oil in this cup, and so I put my shortening in there, and then when you need to dump it out, it just comes out real easy. Just thought I would tell you that tip. So I've got my shortening in here, and now I'm just going to bring it in together like this with my flour mixture. You want to make sure that you take your time and you do this because you don't want big clumps of shortening in there. You want to just really just dissolve it until it's almost like powder. So once I have turned this into really, really fine crumbs like this, I'm going to add one egg into my mixture like this. And I'm going to put in one teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this, just like I did with a shortening. You see, and you want to make sure that that you bring it in together really, really well and real evenly done because if you were to stop right here, you've got a lot of flour that don't have the egg and the vanilla in there and then you've got clumps where you do. So you wanna make sure you take your time and you do this right here and make sure that it's all incorporated really, really well. So once I have brought in my egg and my vanilla in really, really well. It almost looks like breadcrumbs. Look at this. See? See the texture like that? Now I'm going to add my milk. And I've got one fourth of evaporated milk. Now you can use, and it's warm. Now if you want to use whole milk, you can. Just make sure that it's warm. And I like to put in just a little bit at a time and just bring it in and then add a little bit more and bring it in and work it slowly. And it doesn't take a lot. And this is the last of my milk. If you feel like you wanna add just a little bit more of your milk, you can, but usually about a fourth is just right for me. Now, once it comes in together like this, it's not ready yet. It's got to be kneaded really, really well. So I'm going to do it on this counter over here. And I'm going to knead it real good like this. It almost looks like a cookie dough. But the more, it's still a little grit, gritty as you can see. You see how it's kind of gritty? because it hasn't been kneaded yet. You see? That's why you have to knead it real well. And the more you knead it, the smoother and smoother it gets. 
So I'm going to be doing this for about 15 minutes. Now I wanted to show you that it's already come together like this. I like to put a little bit of oil, just regular vegetable oil in here. And I rub it on the palms of my hands like this. And then I continue working it. As you can see, the dough just looks so, so pretty. Look at this. See what a pretty dough that is? Now, if you've ever seen gorditas de azúcar already made, you'll see that some of the gorditas de azúcar look real, like they have real jagged edges all the way around. And that's because it wasn't kneaded. That's my opinion. I think it's because it wasn't kneaded well enough. But when you have it kneaded like this, it, and you have your, your dough looking like this, that's when you have gorditas that are really, really pretty instead of jagged. You don't want to jag it because that means you didn't knead it well enough, okay? So now that my dough is ready like this, I'm just going to let it sit right here, just like that, just for a little bit while I clean up my area, and then we're going to make it. Now I've got my tortilla press, two pieces of plastic that I'm going to be using. And I'm going to be using my electric griddle only because I wanted to. You can just do them on, on the stove. So I've got a little bit of oil right here. Now that's just the way I do them. Everybody makes them differently. Now I like to get just a little ball about the size of a little ping pong ball. More or less like this. You see in my hands are nice and oily. And I think it works so perfect like that. It gives you the most beautiful gorditas when you do this. Keep your hands nice and oily like this. And just make some real pretty. And I'm going to make it about this size. See? Then I'm going to put it in between these two pieces of plastic. And I'm barely going to press on it. Be pressed like that. Just like that. See? Just like that. Now I wanted to show you something that I do. And I think they are so delicious. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you something that I like a lot. Better than just plain like that. I have a little bowl right here with real finely chopped pecans. And I like to get my dough and I like to... You know, just get me some of the chopped pecans like that. And then I just knead it in like that. The pecans are in there. So I put it right there in between the two pieces of plastic. And I just give it a light little press. And you can see the pecans are in there. See? I love it with the pecans. They are delicious. Now it's about time for me to flip these over. See how pretty that is? See? Now when your hands are nice and oily, it gives you this real smooth look all the way around. You see how nice and smooth they are? They're not jagged. And that's because it was kneaded very, very well with the oil. It gives you a very smooth, smooth, round gordita. Just like that. So it's time for me to flip the one with the pecans. These are ready. See how pretty these are?
You know you're ready to flip when you start seeing little bubbles like this. Just like this, the little bubbles. You know it's time to flip it over. You want to be very careful. See? There it goes. When you start seeing little bubbles form, you know it's time to flip it over. So they're ready. This is my last one. So here they are. Now I made 13, but my Ron ate two while he was videoing me. But here they are. So now for the taste test. Well, I'll get the hottest one. Now there are several ways you can eat these. If you want to, you can just put it, a little butter on them like this. See, since it's real nice and warm, melting on it like this. So you can just eat them with butter. And if you want to, you can put some honey on them. Like this. You can eat them with honey. You can also put some jam that I made. And this is one of my favorite ways to eat them. Like that. See? This is a mixed berry jam that I made. And I've got strawberries in here, blueberries, and raspberries. So you can have them with honey. You can have them with butter. Or you can have them with jam, with your coffee, any time of the day. Mmm. Oh my gosh, they're delicious. Mmm. See? Oh, I love them. Mmm. Sweet. I can pick up on the cinnamon. The pecans in there. Mmm. These are my gorditas de azúcar. If you like them, give me a thumbs up. Send me a comment. Tell me what you think. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. Share with your friends. Thank you.